हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू डे फोर राउंड नंबर फोर ऑफ टाटा स्टील चेस 2022 दिस इज योर होस्ट सागर शाह वेलकमिंग यू ऑन दिस अमेजिंग डे टुडे इज अ फैंटेस्टिक डे बिकॉज चेस बेज इंडिया हैज जस्ट टर्न सिक्स इयर्स ओल्ड एंड आई एम सो वेरी एक्साइटेड अबाउट इट बिकॉज या इट फील्स वेरी हैप्पी दैट वी वर एबल टू यू नो स्टार्ट फ्रॉम absolutely nothing and have gone all this way uh, in the last 6 years and a big big thank you to everyone in the chat who has been following us so a big thank you to you and uh, everyone who's here yeah happy birthday cbi today uh, makes sense it's not a fake message it is really the birthday well you can say how do you define a birthday because we launched our facebook page at one time our website on one time so we decided to choose the day on which we incorporated chess base india so today is the day when we incorporated the company uh, and it was 16th of january 2016 uh, sorry 18th of january 2016 and today is 2022 so but what better way to celebrate the birthday than to look at some amazing chess and let's get it cracking we have the one and only vidit gujarati who is leading the tournament once again, once again let me show you what are the standings first for all the people who have missed it vidit gujarati is right there at the top leading from the front two and half out of three you have yan sist of duda on two magnus carlson on two esipenko on two richard rapport jordan van forest mamedya row on one and half and then Karuana Prag Anish Dubov and Karyakin on one Sam Shankland and Grandelius Nils on half a point so this is how <coughs> oh maybe Karuana is on one and half and Shankland is on one because the games had not completed by then now they are over so let's get going let's first check the game right from the start and see what was happening from here you have the live board on the side so you know what the position is for now uh yeah i will i will also put in the link of the article that i wrote today for our uh 6th anniversary and you know i was feeling like very grateful to all the people who have worked for chess base india uh in the past so this is for them and i will pin it i am hoping that today i can have some special guests on this special day so i have uh, asked for a few people to join uh but let's see if if they are here uh, would be nice to um have them okay so vidit opens the game with 1 e4 and he is playing with the white pieces today against andre esipenko now esipenko had beaten magnus carlsen in the last year tata steel and is in general a very very strong player so e5 knight to f3 knight c6 and bishop c4 once again we had the ruy lopez opening on the board and then knight f6 d3 bishop c5 c3 was played Yes oh everyone's very very sharp here Praful Bansali Amit Roy Ethical Gambit Craig Faria Siddharth Ranadev Harsh Saxena all of them say it's Italian not Rui Lopez and I was waiting for you guys yeah you you what would you tell me will you catch me or will you not so uh <laughs> you did catch me and it is the Italian uh so c3 by the way we have the first member on our 6th anniversary sayantan ghosh thank you so much for becoming backer of indian chess very very kind of you d6 was played short castle by vidit this time vidit keeping it very simple h6 now remember if black castles then bishop g5 becomes an irritating move so that's the reason why he played h6 stopping it first of all 
Gorang Gupta sends 123 rupees and also says happy birthday chess base india well thank you so much uh, gorang gupta for your super chat very kind of you um so moving on uh, the game how it continued is like this after h6 it went rookie one short castles h3 by vidit also anish had told us right if you play h3 a little too soon then g4 g4 without if black has not castled could become an issue so that's the reason why you first castle now h3 bishop b6 a4 gaining space hoping to play b4 and a5 so a5 was played by black knight bd2 now this knight is going to f1 to g3 or e3 knight e7 bishop b3 c6 knight f1 very typical play knight g6 knight g3 if you look at this position guys it is kind of complete symmetry yeah if black were to play rook e8, we would have complete 100% symmetry. But this would not be the best because white has a powerful move here. And that is my question to all of you. What should white play in this position? White to move. Oh, Joy Datta has sent a huge super chat saying happy birthday Chess Base India. Cheers. Thanks for being there in our lives. Well, Joy, thank you so much. You're, you're spending so much. Uh, you sent last time a super chat of nearly 4,500 and now another one. So very grateful to you. Thank you so much. And by the way, guys, we have a guest who's joining us. Okay. Tell me, who do you think he is? Yes, D4 is the right answer. All of you who have said D4, fantastic job. You are absolutely right. But now your question is, who is the guest who is joining us right now? Can you tell me and can you guess it? Because it's not so easy. You are all going to be in for a big, big surprise today about the guest who is going to join us. He is, you're not going to guess it. Come on. It's not easy. It's not easy. And no one is going to be able to guess it. <laughs> one second. Sagar? Yes, yes. Uh, hello, Raja. One Can you second. hear me? Yes, one second, one second. Okay, go, go. Yes, now he's here. And let me just... Reveal and we have Temur Rajabo, the one and only man is here. Hello, Raja, how are you? Hi, hi, Sagar. I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. Congrats, congrats. Thank you so much, Raja. It's uh... to celebrate 60 years of uh, chess base in <laughs> <laughs> probably in VR by that time. In VR, when, when, when the world is rid of normal currency and only crypto works. No, then... I think in a few years there will be a clear war and then it's finished. So <laughs> try your best to achieve at least 10 years. Although you don't yes. seem to believe in all this and you are working very hard for the candidates and preparing and all of that. Yeah, I'm working for the candidates because in the history of chess is maybe the last candidates. <laughs> so I just decided, you know. Also, uh, it's in Madrid. So it's a bit, uh, you know, um, far from the main scene of war. So it's uh, more or less should be fine. Wonderful. I think we can play. Yeah, I think we still can play some chess. Yeah, yeah. And we don't know what will happen in four months from now, five months from now. But I hope everything would be good. Uh, but tell us a bit about... This I'm not sure, Sagar. No? Not sure at all. Really? Yeah, it's getting worse every day. So why should be better in five months? <laughs> <laughs> I usually follow this uh, this logic. I'm also very optimistic, but uh, not as much as you. Well, well, I hope that uh, you know at least we want to see you playing in the. Candidate. I know why you are optimistic, Sagar. I know why you are optimistic. Why? Because yesterday, this position was very bad for the entire game, <laughs> and then suddenly it became good. So if we hope for this kind of you know life, yeah, then then it's fine. It can be like this as well in real life. Yes, I want to I want to ask you about today's game also. But before that, 
uh, in general, Raja, how is everything at your end? Is chess right now the only thing that's happening with you or is there something else? You know, everyone's very curious. Chess is the only thing that happening is happening with me. Never happened in my life, Sagar. <laughs> I always had something at least. No, when you so, were yeah, when I you mean, were of 16. Course yeah, of, course, of course, I'm focused. Yeah, we're on training session with uh, Secret Grandmaster. I'm not mentioning. But in general, I think it's just, I mean, it's unnecessary in general for for uh, for, for this moment to mention. For sure, uh, for sure. You know, all the players you're working with and so on. But uh, generally, yeah, I'm following all of the, of course, uh, chess developments and stuff and certainly working on my repertoire with uh, boss colors, uh, which never usually helps. But uh, <laughs> in general, at least it's a good try. <laughs> at least, you know, it's pleasant. Yeah. It's pleasant. Well, you 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 work very hard, and then at the end, someone plays b three or something, and uh, it then goes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or d four, knight of sixty four is six g four. Already, Shahriar revealed. <laughs> Shahriar revealed the entire preparation for candidates. <laughs> so I'm out of weapons, and also today Sergey played against uh, Giri, and also revealed some of the preparation. So. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite annoying. I think Anish wanted to join this stream, so he ended his game very quickly, and he was like, "Okay, maybe." Yeah, can. Sergey as well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but today, uh, yeah. So Vidit is playing as white. He's playing e4. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing e4 today, which is very. Oh, I didn't uh, even mention that. You know, I just came a few minutes ago, and he plays yeah. hardcore one d4, and today he played this, uh, and. Uh, you know, Raja, I, I know that you are on a very, uh, like a strict schedule. I know that. And you also have a lot of things to do. So I won't go through all no, the games. No, it's pretty simple in general, Sagar. It's uh, because I torn the ligament in, in, you know, in the left leg. So I'm just uh, having the shots in the, you know, they do the shots in the ligament, like for the football players and stuff. It's very so surprising that you are preparing chess and you, you tore your ligament. That means also... That's normal. That's normal. That's normal, <laughs> Sagar. Believe me. <laughs> I'm preparing because in general I use all of the energy of my legs while playing. <laughs> so that's uh, that's usual. <laughs> so for for the training session it's fine to just bruise your leg or I don't know whatever it's called. Yeah, torn the ligaments it's fine. Yeah. So so Raja has to go and get the ligament shot for himself. So we will quickly get his thoughts on few of the games. Firstly, with its game right now here in front of you he's playing Andre Sipenko. Um and your your thoughts on uh, Esipenko? Uh, amazing, amazing talent. Yes. Well, <laughs> good guy, certainly. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's a strong player, of course. I mean, now there are so many talents that you can say. I mean, talent is a very you know we have so many talents now in chess that it's very hard to say about someone. He's a good, I mean, great talent or something. It's just. Some outstanding players, probably like uh, Ali Reza for for now, and um, the others are, are very nice, interesting players. But I mean, still they have to prove themselves. Eh? It's a long way to go. So uh, in general, I would certainly say that uh, Prague is a great talent. Let's be fair. Is pink? I think is older somehow, yeah, than, yeah. than Prague. Yes, I guess. Yeah, at by least, at least by I think he looks three, bigger. He looks years. bigger at the, you know during <laughs> during the uh, live transmissions and stuff at least. So I saw that he's probably a bit uh, older as well. Yeah, <laughs> so that's no, the way. Yeah. That's the way in general I <laughs> analyze things in life. <laughs> so the point is that I mean there are a lot of talents, so it's really hard to mention. Already, like when the player is twenty-seven, you can't really say that he's a talent. No, I mean it's like I don't know. It's very hard to say that because for me already it's uh, not depending on the age. It's a super grandmaster or something. Yes, yeah, when, it, when he reaches twenty-seven plus. And Yesipenko is what is like 27, 15. He's 27, 15, but he's 19 years old. So maybe uh, still has some. Although, I mean, if you say Ali Reza is 18 and he's already crossed 2800. So, you know, yeah, new that's, barriers. That's what I'm as, as, as with Tal, Tal, yeah, I was mentioning this many times because Tal was told that, I mean, this guy is very talented and he would say, what, what kind of talent do you mean? I was already ex world champion at this age. Yeah, he was, he was uh, world champion yeah. at 22 or 23, right? So. Yeah, something like 22, I think. Or maybe 21, was he? Uh, I think. I, I thought Kasparov was, Kaspar was of 20. Kaspar was 22, right? So Tal. So, Tal probably was 21. Ah, really? He, he became younger than Kasparo? Yeah, because he, he was born in something like November or something. So he's, he was probably 21 at the time he became world champion. Not sure. Oh. 
Okay, anyway, it was 300 years ago, so it's not uh, so important. And in general, yeah, so I think with Yashipenko, I mean, yeah, he's a strong player, of course. I mean, beating Karakin is white, uh, you know, while he's defending, I mean, in, especially in this E5 structures and stuff is already something, you know, uh, kind of achievement. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's like, it's a very long way to go, so it's hard to say. I mean, he didn't qualify at, at, at the moment to any, uh, uh, you know, to the candidates and stuff. 19 years old, you know, you, you, uh, a few more pandemics and he's 25. So <laughs> it's, uh, already quite <laughs> hard. So the point is that, I mean, you know, Raja, yeah, slowly and steadily, like when you came, I was like, today is the sixth anniversary of chess base India. And you know, today we have a special guest. And by now, like 10 minutes into it, I'm just thinking what is going to happen in future and what is life going to be like? Yeah, it's hard, hard to say, Sagar, hard to say. But the clear war, I think, is uh, waiting. So in general, uh, spend as much money as you can now, Sagar. <laughs> Don't do the stuff, yeah, like collecting rupees. Please. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, in general, I mean, yeah, yeah. Stack some food, rice, I don't know, some stuff, chicken, all this stuff, yeah. And okay. uh, don't get too nervous. That's the most important. That's what I've learned in my long, you know, uh, in my long life. Uh, should be a bit more careless. You, you should be careless. Oh, guys. A bit more, a bit more careless, a I bit. said. I didn't say you should be careless. You guys, remember this. A bit more careless. Beautiful quote by Raja. That you need to live life. You need to be a bit more careless than what you are because you need to enjoy life. Depends. Because if you are super careless, I'm not sure you need a bit more. But I mean, for people like, uh, you know, all the chess players and stuff, usually they're like more kind of, you know, uh, all the time anxious about their, you know, achievements and the openings and all this, you know, like really anxious about it. But then at some point you understand that, I mean, a lot of things also depend on the luck and a lot of things also depend when you when you're working hard. Then, I mean, you just should uh, at some point just skip and say, okay, I mean, uh, let it go. I'm just playing and see, seeing how, how, how it's going, you know, like it's hard to say really that you have to be super focused and stuff. Sometimes you're just relaxed yes. or you don't feel even like playing, but then you are playing some amazing game. This is so what it's I very think hard. Uh, it's hard, yeah. happened with Vidit. He said that this time he's not taking any pressure. He Before yeah. leaving, he said... Uh, every time I'm very stressed, this time I'm just going because I have a long journey. Not only why can't say I have to play two Grand Prix. So, and yeah. uh, he's at least started off very well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And especially that, I mean, he's now uh, making a lot of vlogs and all that stuff. So uh, I just thought that why he's going there. But in general, now I, I like the way he's playing. So it's cool. I like to see him playing there. Yeah, it's good. Also, I like the photos. You know, I've seen a lot of photos of him from the, um, uh, from the supermarket. The famous one in Vike. You have been there probably many times. I, I haven't I haven't been to Vike, so I don't know. Is it is oh, it the only to... one there? You are like Djokovic. Yeah? You want to go to the chess <laughs> <laughs> Australian Open and you can't enter. Problematic. Yeah, but I mean the point is that I mean this supermarket every I mean all of the chess players more or less they know the supermarket in Vike. And it's like probably it's because because it's like uh, <laughs> the only one uh existing uh, supermarket in Vike. So, yeah, and uh, I saw his photos in the mask and stuff, probably done by Anish, yeah? Mm. Yes. Something like that. So An he was Anish, Anish gives content to Vidit, Vidit gives content to Anish. So it's like uh, a mutual yeah, setup. He, yeah. he seemed to be in a good shape, especially in the mask. Mm. So, yeah, that was cool. And because I, we couldn't see any expressions. And, uh, Vidit, you know, he's a very good person and very, like, polite and, you know, gentle and stuff. So it's uh, for him playing with a mask, like Sub-Zero is very good. I like it, okay. but uh, unfortunately, he's uh, taking off the mask, so that's why I'm a bit worried for his uh, next games. Okay, but but yeah. uh, right now, about this position, what do you think? This position, hmm. well, it's very okay. stable for white, but I'm not sure if it's advantageous. Oh well, yeah, slightly better for sure. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know some bishop d2, whatever. Bishop d2. I okay. don't know rook e1, maybe. I don't maybe rook e1 if it works. He he played yeah, rook f1 like. Uh, and then ah, he played Rukep one. SC Penko. So it was like uh, like we we saw it was very symmetrical till here, and then yeah. he played uh, d5. With it mm -hmm. took knight takes, d4 takes takes. So generally in yeah. such symmetry, white should have a very small edge, right? Because he has this extra move. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least black should neutralize somehow. Yeah. So take take bishop yep. e three, bishop c seven. Yeah. Slightly better for white, I guess. B three take take queen e five, queen f two. Rook Bishop C takes g3. Honestly, I don't like that much. I mean, just by the. I don't know. Because well, he had the not... bishop pair, right? So giving up the bishop pair was not the best idea. Just generally, I don't like to give the bishop pair. Maybe that's why I have this uh, feeling. But uh, probably he was afraid of some rookie one. And if queen moves somewhere not to f8, not to maybe some bishop h6 stuff, knight h5, I don't know, some stuff like that. Hard to say, to be honest. But I mean, this knight on d4 is now very stable and. Um, also, black is very solid. So yeah, I would go rook e one maybe. I don't know why rook f one was the was the was played there. Mm, so with it know. did like rook f one, f six, and now rook e one. Ah, okay. So he provoked uh, f six and did this. Yeah, okay, maybe it's possible. But well, I don't know. Uh, honestly, Sagar should be kind of fine for black, but. Uh, there are some some ideas probably if in a practical game you can just do something but maybe black will just move to d6 or something with the queen and um yeah here bishop d2 yeah certainly i mean just it's just a trap yeah yeah or bishop, bishop d2 seems yes. very strong yeah this this probably wins but just the point is that also bishop f4 maybe somewhere i don't know yeah i mean it's like very tricky for for for, for black yeah queen h5. it's trapping almost queen h5 bishop d2 is just simple yeah. bishop d2 is just simple just uh, exchange up yeah 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 so he can't take the pawn, and here you say queen d6, and the game queen goes d6. on, but not not yeah, a quick bishop, draw. Not a quick draw, but uh, black is very stable, I would say. It's also very hard to you know to 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 find something as white to press. So maybe at some point he will have to go for some exchanges like knight b5, maybe or something. Maybe knight b5 instead of rook e1 was possible. Is it possible to play knight b5 instead to put the bishop on d4? But or now, it... now if I take, yeah, some bishop uh, d4 and a b or something. Ah, okay, queen e8 and now a b. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe queen b5, queen f5. I don't know. It's hard to say, but it's just an idea. I don't know if it works, but kind of. Then queen e6 is yeah, queen d5 in case you move the queen to e8. Now this is already kind of close to winning, probably. I don't know. Yeah, this looks very scary. Like this is very scary. Yeah. Bishop f6 and all that stuff it's in the air <laughs> yeah but um i don't know but now after rookie one maybe queen d6 and then what is the idea yeah he's for, for right. thinking right now and so maybe with it with it gets uh it will continue uh meanwhile mm -hmm. if we can just very quickly uh look at carlson van forest uh what do you think about carlson's 2900 elo uh uh you know he's up trying for that it's a bit too much for you or you think it's possible uh well i think not in this tournament no of course not but uh yeah so uh, i guess he has to win all, all all the games almost or something like this no to reach this 29 is it the case or yeah but he he wants to do it like eventually not not in this event but he wants yeah. to achieve that but it's nice yeah i mean it's like a nice goal in general mm. People, many people, including me, uh, they want to reach 28. I almost reached it when I was 27, 99, 6 or something like that. But uh, so I don't really have that dream anymore because it was only 0 0.4 point. So it was kind of close. Yeah, but uh, 29. Yeah, it's a good goal. I mean, he's just setting himself some goals. I don't believe that he will not play the match. Uh, the next World Championship match. I think he's just uh, kind of jokingly talking about this, maybe raising some stakes in terms of, uh, you know, getting some special conditions for the matches like Fisher did at the time mm. by refusing mm. to play the matches and stuff. So uh, this is also a clever decision in case he does it this way, because I mean, for sponsors and for everyone else, they want to see the legend playing and stuff like that. But I'm sure that he's not the kind of person that gives up the title this way, mm. uh, just without any fight. At least um, he would announce it before the candidates or something just officially. And as we see, no official, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, no, no official statement by him waiting for Ali Reja to, uh, uh, you know, to win the tournament and then only play in case he wins. This is, yeah, yeah because before the candidates begins, 
all the players should also know right that this is the next step so i think before it should there should be some statement whether he would defend well i think he generally according to the rules may not defend the title like some champions did at the time but um for now it, I, i mean for this times that we're living in I'm, I'm not sure it's the best decision in general i think he should uh, say it in advance probably but um i think it's like i don't know it's the, the most unlikely scenario of uh, any so i'm sure he will defend the title whoever wins the candidates and uh, of course he will as well defend the title if ali Reza in case wins the wins the candidates so yeah i don't think it will really matter i think he will find motivation for himself um actually including this motivation of becoming 2900 player that he may achieve in a match or somewhere else matches also can be considered like kind of a tournament so why not Hmm. Yeah, so I don't see a problem with this. I think he, he will be playing. He already had this kind of uh, statements before. So, um, and then he played the matches. And uh, many world champions, ex world champions, including Kramnik, they're sure that he will defend the title in any case. G- generally, like at uh, your level and at this super elite level, I think motivation is one of the key factors, right? Because yeah. you yourself at some point was lacking motivation when playing chess. For sure. So for you, this candidate seems like a good motivation to work now because it get if you win, you get the right to play the match. Uh, yeah, because yeah. Sorry, Saga, uh, go on. Or... Yeah. So so is it like these tournaments, or do you have to set yourself some aims, like how Carlson has done twenty nine hundred in order to get motivated? Well, in general, at some point, I just saw that um, um, I'm not uh, any more interested that much to play in this. Um, in the commercial tournaments and uh, I would be happy to play mostly the official tournaments like uh, national team uh, tournaments, all this, you know, World Cups, like the, you know, the, the, the candidates, probably Grand Prix and all that stuff for the qualification. So I was more interested in this because I've played like plenty of the super tournaments, like really a lot in my career. And um, I was also interested in some rapid and bleed stuff and so on. But in general, like mostly in the official events. So yeah, that, that was my motivation for this times to play there. And uh, as I really won the World Cup, so in this case, um, yeah, of course, of course, I wanted to play further on in the candidates. And uh, okay, everybody knows what happened after. So in yeah. general now, yeah, it's uh, I'm back there. So yeah, I'm interested to play there. And certainly it's, it, it, it's a motivation to play there. Uh, compared to, for example, I don't know, getting in some Vikanze tournament. I respect it very much and it's a great tournament, but... Um, I mean, I don't feel this kind of like super motivation and uh, fun to play there, to be honest, for now. So I'll be like having much more fun uh, to try and do my best in the candidates rather than playing in the, you know, in the commercial tournaments. Do do you feel like, uh, again, like you are eight years younger and at that point you played the candidates maybe 10 years ago, you feel that energy again or uh, it's different? Yeah, I'm feeling in general much better in terms of preparation and uh, in terms of like uh, really working on chess back again. Um, I'm not spending as many hours as yet for now as I did in my younger years, certainly. But at least I'm like, uh, you know, calmly getting back, getting back those, um, you know, those type of the analytical work uh, with engines, like interested in what is happening and developments in the Siri and all that stuff um so yeah i'm getting this this kind of feeling so it's pleasant in general and also working on chess is like getting this feeling back of working on chess like you know what, looking at all these developments and uh, checking the current state of siri and all that stuff is yeah it's exciting yeah tremendous well raja it's very exciting for all of us that you are going to play in the candidates because okay there are still two more spots and we hope that maybe vidit gets one or anish gets one and, you know, then all three of you are in the candidates, but at least you are there and it's going to be uh, great fun for all the viewers as well to follow your games. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm receiving a lot of messages from, uh, especially from Indian fans, of course, from Azerbaijan, of course. And uh, like, yeah, everybody is excited about the event. Uh, when nobody knows how it will go as usual. It's, uh, you know, chess is still a sport as well, beside all of this, um, you know, characteristics that the game has. But yeah. Uh, Anyway, of course, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great tournament. And in general, it's like maybe one of the most exciting tournaments in chess because, I mean, only one spot matters. And uh, with nowadays chess that we have, especially with all these online events and chess probably moving towards uh, the rapid events more um, than, than any other time in the history, probably. 
So um, I think that these candidates and the World Championship match are becoming like the most exciting part of the classical chess. So yes. that's why I think it's, uh, it's the most, uh, you know, um, anticipated tournament in the chess calendar. So, yeah, Amazing. it's also exciting for us, for the players as well. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Fun. Well, well, Raja, thank you for joining us. And, you know, uh, you. You're, you have to go and get your shot. So I don't want to keep you for too long but uh, it was really nice because i i wrote to you and i said today is our sixth anniversary and would you join and you were so kind to to join in here and and spend thank some you time. so much thank you so much Sagar. whenever i have time it's a pleasure to join uh sometimes i don't feel uh that's that much energy to speak um especially when 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 there are some you know things to do a lot of things to do throughout the day but uh anyway i'm super happy whenever i have even uh slightest possibility like five percent of the battery i'm happy to join the, <laughs> the streams and of course see you and all the fans and chess base india is doing amazing job as i always said and even before um when i was not on youtube myself at all so yeah we, we appreciate all of your efforts thank you congrats so again good luck and um hopefully the stream goes good yes and everything is fine <laughs> yeah for sure okay, Sagar. Thank take you very care much. raja and uh, all the best for your preparation thank you thank you Sagar. Bye. thank you bye-bye congrats bye guys that was temur rajabov joining us and it was so nice to see him after such a long time uh you know he was streaming so much he connected with all of you uh, to such a level where we all became fans of his um, the way he spoke his candidness his his candor his basically the <clears throat> the way he would connect to everyone and today uh, he was here back and it felt so nice to see him after such a long time and he's preparing very hard for the candidates that is so nice that is so nice and uh, I'm very uh, excited that uh, he will be playing and we hope that we will get few more of our friends in the candidates, which would be very cool. But for now, guys, we have a few games to look at. And in this position, which is Magnus Carlsen against his second Jordan Van Forest. It's a very, very interesting position where Magnus seems to be pushing a bit and he is having the pressure but at the same time, it seems like Jordan is also creating pressure over here. So the position is around equal. But let's say if I take here, you take here, there is a weakness here on the queen side. But let's say if I try to attack it this way, then maybe black can play rook f6, defend here, swing over the rook and put pressure maybe with h3. So that is an interesting position. We also have to see the game of Pragnananda who is playing against Nils Grandelius and Pragnananda has a great position right now. People are saying that uh, Arjun is better. So let's quickly also check what Arjun is up to. We have the board here. Arjun is playing against Rowan Vyogel. By the way, uh, in that game, Pragnananda is better. We are going to check Pragnananda's game carefully. But look at what is happening here. Arjun Erigesi playing with the black pieces has now got his bishop here. He's attacking the rook on f5. We, I know there are some super chats also that have to be read. I will be reading them. But why is white completely losing here? Let's try to wrap our brain around it. First of all, the threat is to take this. Correct? So if you move the rook away, then d3 hangs. Because then the knight is hanging and also the bishop is attacking. Okay. So then he would take here. But if he takes here, then I will take back and I will attack your knight. And let's say you go here, then I will take your rook. So actually, there is no way to save material. Very, very surprisingly, Arjun Erigesi has now got a winning position. And he is leading in this tournament along with the Russian super talent Murzin. Volodar Murzin, who is right now playing with Erwin Lamy here, white pieces for Murzin and the position is equal right now. So it seems to me that maybe Arjun will become the sole leader in the tournament. But very quickly, how did Arjun get this position? So c4, knight, uh, knight f6, knight f3, g6. It was the king's Indian setup for Arjun. Ooh, Arjun playing the king's Indian. Very, very rare. Yeah, he hasn't played before. And Bishop G4. 
The main move here, guys, by far is knight c6. But Arjun goes first bishop g4. Very interesting. d5, he plays a5. Now, the a5, when he plays, on which color complex is black playing this game? Can you tell me on which color complex is black playing? Also, we have a few super chats here. And let me just quickly read them. M3 says, welcome Raja from Bhedio Ka Jund, that is uh, the wolf pack, watching another Bhedia hunting on the chessboard. Happy birthday, Chess Base India. Thank you, M3. Tathagat Guha has become backer of Indian chess. Thank you, Tathagat. Kalpak Rao sent, hi Rajat. Thank you, Pranit Das has sent 640 rupees and says, at this moment, everybody knew this is going to be a long stream. No, no, no. We called Raja for a short time only. Avan Jain is here, whom I met in Dubai. He says, happy birthday to Kid of Sagar and Amruta. Happy birthday to the channel for which we wait to come live. Reason for our happiness. Six years will become 60 years. Thank you, Avan. And Anut68 says, many thanks to Sagarji for his efforts. Thank you. Sibi has become backer of Indian chess. Thank you so much. We have three members today. Very nice. Yes, dark squares is where Arjun is actually playing on. Absolutely right. Look at these pawns all controlling the dark squares. He wants to eliminate this knight and put his knight like this. So knight e1, he goes back. He doesn't exchange it. Knight d3, this looks great position for white right now. Bishop g5, h6, he goes back. b6, you know, it looks very, very bad King's Indian actually. f4 is not very common, I would believe. He can play f3 and start playing on the queen side. And white would have a very good position. Pallav Doshi, thank you so much. Congratulations for six years, 60 more to come. But after f4, ef, rook f4, queen e7, rook a f1, rook a e, he played g5, rook f2, rook a e8. It seems like Arjun has got control now of the dark squares. You see, this knight will come here. Bishop g4, bishop g4, h3. He put his bishop back here. e5, bishop g6, rook f5. What? What sort of move is this? I mean, Vogel Rowan is just giving up his rook. Even if Arjun just takes this, it's, it's completely better for black. I mean, I don't know why he did this. And now Arjun played the best move. And as we discussed now, this knight is hanging with the x-ray from the bishop. The rook cannot move. If he takes here, then ab4 attacks this knight. Arjun's going to win this. He's going to take this home. Okay, let's go quickly back to our game of Vidit Gujarati versus Andre Esipenko and see what's happening over there. So... After what Raja said, you know, we, get a, we got an idea about what was happening. It felt like Vidit is slightly uh, better or you could say close to equal. But the game is not going to end in a draw very, very soon. So we will see how that goes. Your honest opinion says Safed B. Kala B. Who among Ding, Aronian, MVL, Anish, Wesley, Mamediarov, Naka, VD do you think is the favorite to grab two final candidate spots? Very difficult to say, but I think Wesley So is definitely very strong. Uh, Ding Lejeune also, Anish. If Vidit can make it, that would be epic. But the format of Grand Prix is so tough. You have to play in those quarters and then you have to win in your quarter. And you have to come first and it's not easy to, to make that happen. So right now, Vidit has put his knight on f5 after... Uh, Esipenko put his queen back to d6. Vidit goes knight f5. And now the question is, what will black do? Because his queen is being attacked. So let's say black takes here and Vidit takes here. Now you can't win this pawn on c3 because your g6 knight is hanging. So what do you do here? You attack the queen. Now once you attack the queen, then white goes queen f4. Looking at the queen. And then let's say you exchange. I take with the bishop. But then king f7 and then this is weak. So let's say if I take gf. And if you take here. Then bishop d2. Attacking the rook. Attacking the a5 pawn. Attacking the knight. Attacking the rook. So you may have to go like rook c7. 
and then bishop a5 and white is slightly better so yes in some lines with it has some play but if black plays well like let's say queen f5 knight e7 i think here with it might not have too much of an advantage also the c3 pawn is weak so what with it wants to do is he wants to put his bishop on d4 So now let's say if I go bishop queen h5, trying that if you take here, rook takes c3, I could get in with some check. But I can also play bishop h6. Now this starts to get quite nervous for, for black because if you take here, then I can now play queen e8 check. And next move I will snap off this knight on e7. So I think... If anyone is pushing here, it is white. But black is very close to equality. Very, very close. So with it has to, you know, it's it's like this. There is a lamp which is burning. Okay, there is this flame of the lamp. But there is wind coming from all ends. And in order to keep that light glowing, you have to nurture it very carefully and take it away from the wind. Only then it can brighten up. That is with its advantage. It is very, very small. And also it might not even exist. Okay, let's go to Pragnananda's game and let's see what he is up to because Prag is playing the first super tournament of his life and he is facing Nils Grandelius. So very quickly, let's take it from the start. Pragnananda played d4. It was the... Which opening, guys, is this? Can you tell me which opening is this? Queen a4 check. He played this queen a4 variation. <laughs> Harish Nagamalla says, wind taste bhi a sakti hai. Of course, even Asipenko can win that position. I'm not saying that that is not going to happen. Yes, Grunfeld, Rakshit, Mrigank, Rajam. Crazy content, information, Abhiraj, Aditya. It is called the Grunfeld. So, knight d7, knight to f3, short castles, queen a3, c5 was played, bishop e2, b6. Whoa! And look at Pragnananda. He's gone for this move. h4. Now we need to see if this has been played before in any of the games for which we will use our chessbase 16 and mega database and try to see and live database that if this has been played before. Um, so let me just check here. Yeah, so here he played the move h4. And this has, oh, no games. Oh, one game. It's between Bur, Burmeister versus Cousins. And it is an email game. It is a correspondence game. Tanmay Rawal says, happy birthday, Chess Base India. Congrats, Sagar Bhai. And he sent 64 rupees, 64 squares of the chess board. Thank you so much, Tanmay, for your super chat. Very kind of you. Now, look at this. This name here, if you can see, it's called ICCF. I'll just try to zoom this in. So that you can see, look here, it's called email ICCF, which is International Chess Federation, Correspondence Chess Federation. What is Correspondence Chess? Correspondence Chess is nothing but what you play, not move by move. You make one move, you wait for some time for your opponent to make his moves. It's not real time. And there the games are of very high quality. And many of the top players prepare from those games. So if you see here, 15 games have been played in this position. Nana Zagnitze has played this. Uh, Lagno, Inarkiev, Cheparinov. So Pragnananda looked at it and they have all castled here as white. And he said, what is the move that I can prepare here? And he found H4 as a very interesting idea here. So excellent uh, preparation by Prag. Let's go back to the main board. Uh, h4 and now bishop to b7 was played. Meanwhile, 
in the game of Vidit over here, as we see, we have a small uh, live board here. He took on f5, queen f5, knight e7 was played by Esipenko. And now it is interesting to note where will Vidit move his queen. Okay, coming back to Prague's game, bishop b7 had been played here after h, uh, sorry, e5, d5. Knight f6 was played. Prague went bishop g5. Queen e8. He chopped this off. This is looking pretty good for Prague because now h5. And you can see this bishop is closed. He's opening up the king side. Bishop g4. Knight d2. Bishop d7. He plays c4. Now he's going to switch the queen over into the attack. This is getting exciting. Queen e7. Queen c3 was played by Prague. Hmm. Why would Prague play queen to c3? Very interesting. Maybe he was looking at something against bishop g5 perhaps. And what would have been Prague's idea here guys? White to play. What do you think would Prague have played in this position? No, Wasifuddin Muhammad, it was not a waiting move. Yes, knight f3 is one of the ideas, but I like another move here. Definitely knight f3, but I think for queen c3, his main plan was, and that is what I see a few of you have given the answer, which is a4. Prakash Prasad and Bunny Eat World. Well done, both of you. I think he might have wanted to play a4, a5. That's why he got his queen here. But even knight f3 is an excellent move there. But even bg7, queen e3, f5, hg, hg, a4, bishop f6, and now Prague went a5. But perhaps Prague had a better move in queen h3. Moving his queen here, it was possible to play this move. And the main point is that if you were to take here, then I have a very powerful move at my disposal here as uh, white. What should white play in this position? Can you tell me white to play? There's a very strong move here. No, they win queen a7. Queen h7 is not possible because of queen is defending that square, I believe. So you can't go here. But there's a very powerful move. Let's see what you guys have come up with. Yes, it is bishop g4. Tremendous move. Bishop g4 is the correct move. Sabarna Mukherjee, Crazy Content, Jay Arawat, Sanjay PD, Pranay Akula, Tizia Kumar, Ritik Gujran, Deepak Rajesh, Paras Bhoir and Divyansh. You play your bishop to g4 and after take take you attack this pawn. Next move knight is coming here. It will be unmovable and this is completely winning position. So he could not play that and he played the move uh, here. He didn't play queen h3, he played a5. Bishop g5, queen h3, queen g7, queen c3. Prague is moving back and forth. So is his opponent. And now bishop d3 in the position has come. So if over here it is white's move, then white is most likely to play his knight to f3 now. And he will hit the bishop and also the pawn on e4. So I have one question, ah, if you take here, then he will take back with the queen. And if you take here, he will take with the bishop, understood. So he's not going to take with the king. Uh, we have a super chat from Safed B. Kala B says, your favorite game from 2021, only one in classical rapid and blitz. Very tough question. And maybe I have to think a lot about it as to which would be my favorite game. 
Uh, but you know, there's this very nice app. If you aren't following it, please do download it. It's called the Follow Chess app. Oh, they have removed that. But they had this thing at the top, which was best games of 2021. It is there. It is still a little below. And there are some very nice games there. I think Carlson versus Nepomnishi game number six of World Championship. That should take the toast. That should definitely. And if you ask for rapid, then I would say Abdu Satarov versus Carlson. Brilliant game again. And if you ask for blitz, I have to think a bit. But there were so many nice games, yeah. I have to think. Nils has 9 minutes. There are 25 moves done. 15 more moves to make. And Pragnananda has 30 minutes. So right now, position is better. Time is on his side. If Pragnananda gets his first win in the tournament, that will boost his confidence like anything. Let's look at Vidit versus Esipenko as to what is happening there. After 97, Vidit is in for a deep, deep think. I think he had 34 minutes here. He's now down to 26 minutes. He's 8 minutes below his normal time. I mean, he's taken 8 minutes already. So he's thinking, kya kare yahan par? Because on one hand, he has a weakness here. But imagine if Vidit gets two moves, you know, if he gets two moves in this position. So let's say, if I go queen f3, okay, and now you can take this pawn, but imagine you don't do it. And you play a move like, um, say, king h8. Yeah, just for the sake of argument. And if I can play bishop d4, this already, this position is much better for Vidit much much better also another move here could be bishop f4 and you can see that this queen does not have a great square because the knight is hanging queen d7 could be played but now comes a very very strong move and this shows that black's position is not bulletproof what does black play in this position come on quickly let me know a very very strong strike and it helps you to be tactical, to be alert. What is happening here? Yes, no name. Today is your birthday as well. Happy birthday to you along with Chess Base India. Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> no. <clears throat> yes, exactly. You guys are tremendous. Bishop at 6. What a move. You... Guys, I, I love you all and I think you all are tremendously strong. Vishal Kalyan Sethi, Mr. Dham, Adarsh Kartikeyan, Dhanush, Utkarsh, Dhruv, Aryan, Giridhar, Rajam and Sumathi. Congratulations for finding such great moves. Now, the move here is Bishop H6. I chop it, you chop it and I take on F6 and then I take on E7 and it is game over. So, you see that with it, actually has some really cool ideas in this position with taking here but because his position is not 100 percent so let's say for example he goes queen h5 i like this move a lot but then queen g3 becomes a problem right because queen g3 how do you defend your rook ah you play bishop f2 and you attack his knight but then he goes back and then you put your bishop back here and you say I've lost a pawn, but I have got control now with my pieces. But it doesn't look like sufficient compensation for a pawn. You know, maybe it's enough, but there's no advantage. So here, black seems to be holding his own. So I don't think Vidit will go queen h5 here. He has other move like queen f4. I think he will do this queen f4. Queen takes f4 and now you want to take with the bishop to attack this knight. But what happens is that then he plays king f7 and suddenly c3 is weak. So you take with the pawn. This is a very smart move because what happens now is that if rook c3 we saw bd2 attacking the rook and also the knight. But black has a very strong move here. Can you find it black to play instead of rook c3 there is a better move for black in this position. What is it? Black to play.
what is wrong with queen d3 in this position is asked by Jaidev. Jaidev, let's have a look at your suggestion as well. What is wrong with queen d3? Yes, there is knight f5 move. Beautiful. And the number of people who have suggested this move is amazing. We have almost like all the best moves are being made here. If this chat plays the world championship match, you will win it. Shaibi Binoj, Indira, Sals, the music band, Mr. Dam, Anish Parasnis, Mamba, Chess Master, Ayusha, KP Singh and Tizia Kumar. So knight f5. And what happens here is that this bishop is attacked and if it goes to d4, it will be taken off. So, yeah, one more question that was asked by Jaidev is why not queen d3? But I think Jaidev, you have two pawns which are hanging, right? One is c3 which you defended, but the other pawn is hanging. Which one? Tizia Kumar says queen g4 in that position, but also rook c3 may be there. Ah, you want to take bishop h6 then. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, queen g3 is hanging. Absolutely. So this will not work. Queen g4 is what Tizia Kumar says. But let's say I take here. And yes, your idea was bishop h6. But then I have rook g3. And uh, somehow the mate is defended from behind. So actually, uh, Esipenko is in a way, has saved everything in his position very nicely. He's done some great, great thinking here. And he seems to be in a very good position. By the way, very quickly checking Magnus Carlsen versus Jordan Van Forest. Here, what we said has actually happened. Remember, we were looking at this position with b5. Jordan pushed. Magnus played rook c1, rook f6. They took, took, g4, h3. Ooh. You know, sometimes it's good to give up things in order to get free-flowing things. Like, for example, let's imagine that you start a business, okay? And you have a business that is, you put in your energy, you put in your life, you put in everything, your time and everything. And then it's starting to make losses. It is making you spend so much time, but not making profit for you. And you are in a big, big spot because you put in so much effort and energy, but it's not giving you the returns. It's very difficult to let it go. But at the same time, it's not allowing you freedom. But when you give it up, yes, you've given up your time. But after Queen H3, when you give it up, you have now free flowing position. Rook can go to h6. It can attack from here. Many times it's a question of giving it up at the right time. And what you don't realize is that in return, you do have the experience you have gained from your previous thing, right? You have not lost that. So same way, black does have the open h file now to attack. So queen g2, rook g6, he's putting pressure here. And he sees that if h3, then there is a very powerful move for black. What does black play here? Black has a very powerful move. Yes, absolutely. This is absolutely correct. The move here is, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't cut the previous uh, answers, but it is rook f3, and very good job done by Shivam Choudhury, Saransh Chauhan, Crazy Content, Dipesh Sokhal, Sabarna Mukherjee, Jayant Shaibi, Mamba Mahek, and Rishita. Great work. Rook f3, the rook will come in and you will see that black has a lot of play. Maybe rook takes h3, queen takes h3, rook g4 is also on the card somewhere. And the other thing is rook h6. 
So you see, by giving up the H pawn, he is getting play. For example, rem think about it. If he had not given up his H pawn, and he would have played rook f8, then Magnus would have played h3. And now with rook f3, you can only put one attack here. You can't have more than one because this pawn is in between. And this is hanging on c6. So therefore, here h3 takes and now Magnus went g5. But guys, this game is getting really nasty now. Because when Jordan will put his rook on f3, he is having a lot of pressure. This is fun. This is fun. Let's go back to Vidit versus Andre Sipenko. Has Vidit played his move? Vidit is down to 16 minutes. They have 27 moves, 13 more moves to make. Not much time left. Sipenko has 15 minutes. Vidit has 16 minutes. Anything can happen. Let's go quickly to the game between Mamediaro versus Jan Sistov Duda. Two rooks versus knight and bishop. It seems like this position is very complicated. Don't know what to do. The, is the king trapped? Is this a mate? No, there is an opposite. Also, the king is king can go to g5. But black looks to be better unless white finds something. Oh, g4 has been played. A check here. What do you do? I think you have to take. And then after fg3, this position may be around equal. Okay. Some news coming in. Shankland versus Richard Rapport draw. Karuana versus Daniel Dubo draw. Karyakin versus Anish Giri draw. Look at this, guys. Look at how quickly they drew their game. Actually, Anish would be very happy because he was black. And generally, if you can get a draw with black, that's a great news. But Sergey did not fight. So that was a draw. Now going back to Nils Grandelius versus Pragnananda. <coughs> He has he had played bd3 and he was putting pressure here. So now Grandelius has put his queen back. Now, what is the move that Pragnananda should play, guys? Can you try to find black white to play? What do you do here? Pragnananda has a great position. Why is Anish not in form? Well, I think Anish will get back in form after the rest day. Tomorrow is a rest day. He will get some rest. And also, he's drawn three games, lost one. That's okay. He'll make a comeback. Yes, absolutely right. Knight f3. Beautiful job. So many of you has played knight f3. And the right move has been given by Shaibi Binoj, Hugo, Puneet, Alpesh, Chintan, Veer. Dilip, Bhagyashri, Gagandeep. And that is the correct move. Knight to f3. But I think Jordan was, is ready, not Jordan, Grandelius is ready for knight f3. You know what his plan is? If you go knight f3, he wanted to drop his bishop back. That's why he moved his queen away. But now... How can Prague put more pressure on this position is the question. I mean, White's position better. He has the passed pawn. He has the pressure on the position. But somehow, he is not able to get things rolling. How should Pragnananda break through? Any ideas? Aha, Vidit has played a move. Guys, we'll go there. But what do you think here? King e2 says Krithik. Okay, interesting move. Krithik, very nice. You want to put your rook double down the h file or double down the a file. Very interesting. King e2. I like it. I like it. Rook at 6 maybe, yeah, possible. Putting your rook there also looks interesting. I actually really like king e2 because king looks safe here. Brilliant job, guys. All those who said king e2, fantastic. Akshat Chaudhary, yeah. Like this move, king e2. And let's see if uh, Prag gets to this position. Meanwhile, Vidit Gujarati has made some kind of an interesting idea. Oh, guys, look. What is Vidit thinking? 
सो विदित हैज प्लेड क्वीन जी फोर कर्तव्य गुप्ता से इस भाई प्लीज विश हैप्पी बर्थडे दीक्षा वेल हैप्पी बर्थडे दीक्षा हियर द पॉइंट इज ही वॉन्ट्स टू टेक ऑन एच सिक्स मतलब अगर समझो यू आर इन योर ओन वर्ल्ड ओके एंड यू प्ले लाइक रुक सी सिक्स समथिंग लाइक दैट देन आफ्टर बिशप एच सिक्स यू आर लॉस्ट ठीक है दिस इज द थ्रेट जस्ट टू शो यू सो एज वी डिस्कस्ड ही माइट टेक ऑन सी थ्री सो विद इट इज थिंकिंग इन इज माइंड कि भाई अगर मैं इसको मारूंगा इफ आई टेक ऑन एच सिक्स देन ही इज टेकिंग ऑन जी थ्री सो वॉट शुड वाइट प्ले इन दिस पोजिशन दैट इज द क्वेश्चन हियर आफ्टर रुक सी थ्री वॉट इज द मूव दैट वाइट शुड प्ले बिशप एफ फोर राइट दैट इज वॉट यू आर सेइंग बिशप एफ फोर and queen c5 check because if you don't play a check then you move your let's say you move your queen away to d8 then i play bishop at 6 and you are done you are lost so you need a tempo so you go to c5 now with it plays king h2 now the point is is black well equipped for bishop at 6 see black has won a pawn but in order to win a pawn he has lost his balance imagine yourself in a forest okay you are trying to hunt but you are also hungry so you see you are you are just waiting for some kind of you know like animal could attack you so you are waiting to attack it and so on but you see there's a fruit there but you are completely focused you are like little bit tense should i go for the fruit anyway you go for it because you are hungry you go for the fruit you lose your balance now the tiger can attack you much more easily because where you are sitting you were well positioned to avoid the attack here after this position how does black try to save himself from bishop h6 because he's lost his balance somehow also queen e6 check is threatened and bishop d6 is also coming so it's not simple by just winning the pawn yes he has won the pawn so right now asipenko has taken asipenko is like this young hunter you know who doesn't fear the tiger he's like udhar apple padla hai i'm going to eat it i'm going to take that apple it's nice and juicy apple an apple in hand is worth the <laughs> more than anything but what is with its plan now so vidit has two ways to continue he has one way which is to play bishop f4 queen c5 king h2 correct and then black has to find the only defensive move here which is king h7 that's the only defensive move here and still i would say that this position is not easy because you can see that somehow the white king is very safe well the black king looks a little bit exposed little exposed but how to take advantage of it is the question because next move my knight is coming out here once my knight comes there then i have more protection as black so i'm very curious as to what vidit is planning to do here what is on vidit's mind in this position is it to play directly king h2 because he gave up the pawn here i'm sure he saw that bishop h6 does not work because although this is pinned rook takes g3 is coming so he's not going to go for this line for sure crazy content says bishop d2 mm crazy content what about ah you are very smart you are very smart look at this guys here rook g3 does not work because of a very nice move can you find it white right to play let's see how many of you are alert and can calculate here and not look at the engine think guys please think on your own i request you i request you to think on your own it's not right to go and check the engines isn't the b3 pawn also hanging hardik kalya hardik but the thing is like you can eat two three apples more but in the end if you die like your king would become really weak here no not bishop f4 bishop f4 does not work because i guess bishop f4 that is queen c5 check and it's you are just busted 
check and then you lose the queen so all those who are saying bishop f4 check focus come on yeah i'm back here and uh, what i was saying is that guys don't look at the engines and you have tried on your own which is very good and thank you so much for doing that i'm very very happy uh, that you are you have taken this decision to to think on your own now um bishop f uh, by the way just to come back and tell you that here queen f4 is the winning move because now you are attacking the queen also the rook and if you take here then i'll take here attacking your rook and also the knight so this is the winning idea and let's go back quickly sorry for the short lag sometimes it happens when i change scenes i don't know why that happens i have to figure that out somehow um okay queen c5 king h2 and look at esipenko within just 10 seconds he has found the move king h7 so he has thrown back the ball in vidit's court and asked him vidit pawn to de diya tune maybe he says this in russian yeah pawn you you've given me the pawn how are you going to get compensation maybe vidit says i go rook e6 guys idea is bishop d6 so again quite a deadly move i think today the roles have been reversed the roles have been reversed like yesterday dubo had sacrificed a pawn and vidit was defending today vidit has an, has sacrificed a pawn and he's trying to attack so now if knight g6 that is the only defensive move people want me to say russian yes i actually i haven't spoken russian in a long time but i can speak russian in this position oh man russian is like a lot like chess yeah if you don't practice it you become really rusty at it become very rusty king h7 what do you do now actually with it i guess with it might want to play queen e6 because see he wants to keep the rook on the last rank he also wants his bishop here maybe queen e6 but then knight g6 the knight is such an irritating creature it is always coming on g6 and trying to defend everything how about i try to stop it with h4 h5 but then when i go h4 he will anyway come to g6 someone said queen d7 but queen d7 knight g6 again what do you do vidit has 10 minutes 53 seconds he's pawn down esipenko is this young and how do i put it fearless player yeah and the main thing about these young players is that you tell them i'm giving you a pawn but be be aware i will attack the first thing these youngsters do is like they like okay i'll take the pawn now you attack show me the attack this is exactly what esipenko has done here the moment with it played queen g4 he just took on c3 like he just snatched the pawn in like 4 minutes and then after bishop f4 he gave a check instantly not queen d8 he gave a check instantly on c5 and then after he played king h2 he instantly played king h7 so esipenko has played his last few moves very quickly and you know guys sometimes when you're playing over the board this energy flow now shifts sometimes like yesterday if you remember dubo was trying to attack and with it made this 3 4 moves quickly you know this defensive moves dubo was thrown off balance a little bit and here i think the same could happen with with it where he could get thrown off balance because his opponent has made few moves very quickly 
and it's not so clear how white should get compensation. I know that you could feel it. You can sense it that white has activity. His queen is active. His rook is active. The king looks weak. But you don't have a check here. You don't have this bishop attacking anything. You try to think about bishop at six in your head. But after king at six, you are not able to make things work. You want to give a check, but the king is running away from here. What do you do? And while the time is ticking down, there is nine minutes on the clock. And so while Vidit is thinking for his move, let's quickly go to Pragnananda and see what he has done. So after we left here, Pragnananda did go knight f3. He played bishop f6. We were talking about king e2 in this position. However, Prag went queen c2. Now Prag's idea could be that at the right time, he wants to play ef5, gf5 and bishop f5. He can't do that instantly because ef5 is met with e4 with the bishop attacking on this square. Okay, so rook c8 was played. A, B, A, B. And now, sh oh, shot castle. How did that happen? I was thinking that he's going to just keep his king in the center. But now he says h file is useless. I want to shot castle because this is a weakness. So now Nils plays f4. And guys, this is becoming like a great game because... Weakness yaha par hai. He can just go rook a6, rook b1. But meanwhile, Nils will then play and shift his rook to the h file. He will try to bring his queen here. So he will try to attack. This becomes a super sharp game. And with Prague having 9 minutes and Grandelius Nils having 8 minutes, 11 moves to make. This can go either way. Although the position is clearly in White's favor right now, it can become very dangerous. And I have myself you know, played Nils twice before and in both the games I had a good position but in the end and time pressure, he had tricked me. But I am not Pragnananda, so he can trick me but Prag is very good. Let's see, Prag goes rook a7 and he says, I have pinned your knight for now, uh, for your, pinned your bishop for now. Let's see what Nils does. Meanwhile, let's quickly go and check what Vidit Gujarati is up to here after queen g4. He's still thinking, he's down to 7 minutes. He's down to seven minutes. This is getting really intense, guys, because time becomes a massive, massive factor in chess. Many times when you see a game, like when you are analyzing it just like that, without considering time factor, then you don't get that feel. When you are looking at the time, you realize that there is pressure. I mean, with it can play rookie six here. Let's let's try to think rookie six. He's, attack, he's planning bishop d6 and notice rook c1 with the idea of queen g1 is not possible because the bishop controls the c1 square. So now the only move is knight g6 which is a very very easy move to play. Let's say you go rook d6. Now your point is to attack here. You want to play queen f5 maybe put more pressure here. La Tote says love your energy and humor. Never have I thought such magnificent commentating can be done for chess. Keep it up brother. Thank you so much. La Tote. And now rook b3. And let's say you try to play queen f5. Trying to pin this and put pressure here. I don't know. Maybe Vidit can find all these moves. But you can see that he has got a little bit like stuck at this point. He has got stuck. And this is where I see the game changing. Let's hope that he's able to find good moves. And is able to keep the balance going. But it can go in either way. This is a very crucial move here. With, with it going down to 5 minutes 37 seconds. It's becoming very intense. Meanwhile what Pragnananda is also. We need to switch a little bit. Rook a7 his opponent has played queen d6. Oh my god that is a huge blunder guys. Why is queen d6 such a huge blunder? Because it seemed like his position was bad anyway. But he had to bring his queen here, rook f7, and try for an attack this side. The moment he put his queen here, it's like you are now subjected to defense all your life. Your queen is never going to be able to make it to the king side. And that's the reason why here Pragnananda can play knight h2, bishop e2, and bishop g4. Oh, epic, epic, epic. If you are going to do this, let's say knight h2. And then he goes g5 with his idea of g4. You play bishop e2. And you're going to exchange your bad bishop with his good bishop. And then your knight on g4 will be way stronger than his horrible bishop which is like a pawn. Bigger, big pawn which is just blocked by its own pieces. 
and white is better here. So let's see if Pragnananda finds knight h2, bishop e2. I think that is something that Prag can find. He is very good at all these positional stuff. He can also start with bishop e2 and then knight h2. Meanwhile, going back to Vidit Gujarati's game, Vidit is still thinking 4 minutes 20 seconds left and he has to make 10 moves. What is Vidit thinking? Is he planning to sacrifice something? Oh, rookie 7 is what Jaskaran Singh is saying. Jaskaran, that might not work here because take, take, check, king h8, you take on d5. Yes, you got back your pawn, but you are now in exchange down and he can just play rook c2 and then the queen can come in. This looks not good enough compensation for the exchange. So you cannot sacrifice that. What is he going to do? Queen d7 is what someone said in the chat. But then once again, knight g6. What is your idea, guys, here? Somehow this formation with the king and knight is like, oh. Oh, he's played h4. He's played h4. Now, if Vidit gets another move, h5, he would be better. He would get a great, a great grip on the position, I guess. But Essipenko has a brilliant move here, yeah? I don't think, I don't think humans can find that move. Guys, I don't think humans can find this move. Oh, but what is his idea to knight g6? Which, oh, knight g6 is a blunder. Knight g6 is a blunder. If Essipenko, because I thought h4 go knight g6, are, but it's a mistake. He's not played it. He's not played it yet. But the point is, after this h5, Knight f4, can you find the winning stroke here, guys? Can you find the winning stroke? It's a brilliant move. Wow. Vidit has calculated something which... Knight g... What is the move here, guys? Queen f5 check. Absolutely right. And now, if g6, by the way, queen d7 check and rook e8 is a mate. It's over. So you have to go back to the last rank here, king g8, and I give a check, you come here, and now I go queen d7 over. Oh my god. So h4, the, the most natural move, knight g6, which I thought h5, open bishop marding will take this, is not working. Wow. Wow, what a move. h4. But you know, black has a great move at his disposal here. Which is very difficult to find. But maybe if Esipenko finds this. He might take the advantage in his hand. And you know what the move is. I am going to leave it up to you to find black to move here. What is the best move in this position? Try to think. Black to play. What is the best move here? It's not easy. Not easy. Not easy. Ooh, look at this. Karthik Menon. Ayusha. Well done. Well done. I think the most human move here and which many of you are suggesting and which is very likely to happen is d4. Because the queen then starts to look in this direction, you feel a little bit more comfortable. But the real, real shocker move and if Esipenko plays that, queen to c8. And why is this an amazing move? Because first of all, you're asking the queen, get out from there. Get out from this place area where you are trying to be the boss you can't be here if you take here then i'm going to take back with my knight i'm a pawn up b3 is weak this is going to be a nightmare for with it to defend so he can't take it okay if you want to try and put your rook there trying to block it then he can go knight g6 now and this somehow is a very nasty pin there that does not work again so that's the reason why Rook e6 does not work. You can't exchange. So you go queen e2. You try to come back. But once you come back, black goes knight g6. Game over, guys. Game over. I am going to keep my fingers crossed here that Sipenko, whether he's going to find queen c8 or not, he has 7 minutes on his clock. Queen c8 is just a massive move here. If he can find it, that would be amazing. Carlson, meanwhile, totally winning against Jordan Van Forest, says Rakshit Singh. How? Oh, what happened? What happened? Did he blunder? Because we looked till G5. It was looking very interesting. Oh, he went Rook F5. He had to go Rook F3. Rook F3 was the move. But he went Rook F5, H4, Bishop F8, Rook C2, Bishop E7, Rook B2. 
and he sacked on g5. Oh, he had to take with the rook. If he took with the rook, hg, rook g, he would have won the queen and the position was complicated. But he takes with the bishop and now king f1. Oh my goodness gracious me, what a move by the world champion. Because if he moves back, the rook is hanging. It's a pin. It's a pin. It's an early Carlson as queen a7. And now, can you find the only move? Oh my goodness. It's the only move in this position because he wants to give a check from here and push the king back here. So you have to find the only move that gives you a win in this position. This is, this is Srijan Hari, you, you are right. You have to come out with king e2. We have so many exciting games that I have to show you the move. Can't wait here. King e2 if queen a6. Then now king d1 and the king is safe. This is going to be lost. If Even if you come in, I can now block with rook d2 and white wins. So maybe Magnus has to has his task cut out to find king e2. He has what, 8 minutes to find it. Maybe he will. Let's go back to Vidit's game. Vidit's opponent has played d4. A big relief actually because queen c8 was a very strong move. But is d4, as we said, it's the most human move because somehow, you know, you know, you feel a little bit of relief that, oh, my queen is looking in that direction. Also, the pawn is ready to move ahead. What is Vidit going to do now is a big, big question. Can we go something like h5? Because, you know, when every time I go queen d7, the knight comes to g6. But if I go h5 and then I go queen d7, then anyway, queen takes h5 comes with a check. So I can't even push it. But what, what are the other possibilities, guys, here? Anubhav Gosal says, Queen c8 was very human. It exchanges the queens when being attacked and the endgame is better. Yes, if you spot queen c8, it's very natural. But if you don't see it, it's a retreating move. And retreating moves are tough because you are putting your piece back. So d4 has been played in this position and now bishop d2 could be possible if rook takes b3 now comes queen d7 bishop d2 rook takes b3 let's say queen d7 i attack here you come knight g6 and then rook e8 guys this is getting nasty you know because somewhere this comes here and then tries to checkmate and i feel personally that somehow this game is going to end decisively. What do you think? Although the engine, as always, says 0.00, .00 I am feeling the tension here. With it has 1 minute 23 seconds only on the clock. It's a lot of pressure on him to find the best move. But Bishop D2, with the idea, you know why Bishop D2? Because Bishop, every time Knight G6, like you go Queen D7, Knight G6 hits this Bishop. So I'm just taking it out. Or maybe can we start with this? If we start with queen d7, knight g6, why not here? Then bishop d2. Oh, but then he doesn't take it, right? He plays queen, rook d3 and he puts pressure here. By the way, Vidit has made his move. He has played queen to e6, which is again a very logical move because he's attacking the knight and he's also protecting his b3 pawn. But now can we go knight g6 attacking this? Yeah, well, you can go there and I guess Essipenko is going to play knight g6 in this position attacking the bishop here. But then with it will play his bishop to d6 attacking the queen. Where does the queen go now? Let's say you go queen to g6 now c6. You are threatening g2 pawn. If you can get rook c2, it is a checkmate there. But h5 push. I'm going to take this with a check there. What do you do? Oof, knight h8. No, 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 you're, going to, you're not going to play that move. Oh, you might play knight e5 here. But then I might be able to play like check here. King g8, check here. Uh, sorry, take on e5, f e5, queen check here and a draw. Hmm, king h7, check, king back, check. Should be a draw there. Just to, so I found, at least I found some variation, but right now with it has 1 minute 30 seconds, but that variation which we just saw right now could happen, but may not even happen. 
Oh, what happened in Magnus's game? One minute, what happened in Pragnananda's game? What am I doing? Let's quickly switch, switch, switch. Oh, yes, Pragnananda did that idea. Don't, guys, remember I said bishop e2 and knight h2. He must do it. And Prag did exactly that. He played bishop e2, bishop d8, knight h2, bishop c7, rook a1, king g7, bishop g4. He exchanged it. He took it. And now it's over. Game is over. Okay, maybe if he gets f3, it's finished. If black goes f3, then queen d2 with the idea of coming in here. No, this is done. Pragnananda scoring his first win of a super tournament that he's going to play. He's going to win this. Meanwhile, Magnus Carlsen, after his opponent played there, he did not play king a2 here after queen a7. He played queen g4. Now check on a6, king g1. Oh my god, Jordan Van Forest is back in the game. This is not easy. Not easy. Magnus Carlsen in a lot of trouble. This game is epic, yeah? From the tactical standpoint, a lot of things are happening here. And also, Jordan does not... He's not fearful of Magnus. He's worked with him. When you work with a player, generally you lose your fear. That's what even Judith Polgar once wrote in her book that she, when she worked with Gary Kasparov and saw the human side of the champion, she started to feel like a lot more confident. And the next time she played Gary, she was able to beat him also once. So that does happen. Yeah. And that's why you can see that Dubov, Jordan, all these players who have worked with Carlson can play better against him. Now, Queen e6, it's time for Esipenko to move. 32 moves. We are on the 32nd move. Eight more moves to make. One and a half minute for with it. Three minutes, 30 seconds for Esipenko. But what is he thinking? Isn't this kind of forced? Is he thinking that he can go knight f5 also in the position? Maybe. But then you have to contend with Queen e4 trying to pin the knight. But yes, knight f5 is possible. We have to see what Esipenko is going to do next. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And 2 minutes 50 seconds. He's coming low on time as well. And also, his main worry, by the way, guys, is that knight g6. You might see and you'll be like, oh, the engine supports it. But bishop moves with the tempo. And then h5 also comes with the tempo. So you don't like that. You feel to yourself that this is not what I want. I don't want white to get one tempo after another. So you say to yourself, let's move the knight away somewhere else. Let's say knight c6. But knight c6 is slightly weak, you know, because you're going far away from the king. The king needs his knight. The king needs his knight. So knight g8 is also a move that you think of. And when you're thinking of so many possibilities and you see the time, you're like two minutes, 10 seconds left. Knight c6. Maybe queen d7. Then rook e8. I think he's getting to go, going to get to the king first there. So, careful. Careful what black does here. This move might be a very important one. Nerves of steel are required, guys, in chess. And that's why engines are so good. They have hardly any emotions. Draw! What? Oh! I don't know whether to, I should be happy. I should be sad. I don't know what emotions should I have. I think with it played queen e6 and offered a draw. Maybe a very smart decision. Maybe a very smart decision. <laughs> I mean, my initial reaction was, oh, I wanted the game to continue. There was so much fun. But maybe it was the smartest decision that with it made in this game. You know, he play because in a way, like objectively, objectively, knight g6, bishop d6, queen c6, h5, knight h8. Maybe this position is not clear. Threatening, threatening rook c2 to checkmate here. Let's say you go rook e2, I have rook e3. You take, I take. All of a sudden, after queen f5 check, king g8. I don't know who's better. Queen e6 check. There is knight f7. Right? So, maybe very smart decision by Vidit Gujarati to offer a draw at the right time when the opponent... And also, his time was lower than Esipenko. I mean, Esipenko would have wanted to continue. What do you think, guys? 
smart move smart decision let's go to pragnananda's game and keep the tempo going but what do you think maybe a yeah? great result for vd says rahul gosal smart vd i think this draw is like a weapon in chess meanwhile pragnananda has 36 moves four more moves to make but total control total total control i mean this is just this he is not going to lose or he is not going to blunder in any way as i think i think yeah it was smart and also you know vidit is in the lead he was slightly under pressure with time yes he had his chances asipenko might have also gone wrong but i think it was it was a good decision it was a good decision <laughs> directed by robert white Three out of four. Also, let's go to Magnus's game. This looks one-sided, but what is happening in Magnus versus Jordan Van Forest? Thirty-ninth move is King G one. Magnus is afraid to take on G five, of course, because if he takes, it's it's a pin. Amit Jain says, "Great to have you back. Call Samay as well. Yes, for sure. I mean." I have uh, written to him and maybe he will join at some point I don't know maybe we can have another guest maybe let's see if it's too late or in the night or not but this game is not so clear huh oh he's gone rook g7 and now magnus has the final move under time pressure guys what what is he going to play if he goes at g5 that's lost right because after rook g5 you lose your queen so you're never going to take it but if you don't take it i'm going to move my bishop so you take rook c6 a pick move yeah because after take here you take here and you need to do that because if you play directly queen takes f5 then it's lost can you find the winning move here black to play there is a super chat by sashank who sent 6 dollars says congrats on 6 years a very small contribution to join in the celebration thank you sashank very thoughtful of you very kind of you and always appreciate your feedback and comments so thank you so much uh Okay, let's update the live board for Prague game. Very thought, very good thought. Oops, sorry. It's a very good idea. Yes, so you you can see the Prague game here, and yes, yes, Bishop F four check. Bishop F four. King can't come up here. If the king can't come up here, king has to go here. But then there is a checkmate. Oh, so that's the reason why you play Rook takes C six first. here and magnus has just 1 minute left and you know magnus is in big trouble because somewhere in his mind he'll be like what to do if he goes check here there is bishop d8 rook d8 and then this is hanging right game of pins game of pins so rook c6 can magnus find this the idea is that you force the queen away and then you take it so that when the bishop moves king h1 there is no queen f1 check That is the subtle point here. But thirty-seven seconds. Magnus has to make his move, last move before time control. Will Magnus Carlson hold this, or he's going to lose? Tudun, tudun. Oh, he gives a check on b8, and now of course there's no move. You can't come king h7 and give this with a check. You have to go bishop d8. This is also the last move for Jordan. He's going to play bishop d8. Rook takes. Rook f8, Rook takes, King takes, Bishop b4 check, 
किंग जी एट ठीक है ये देखो ये वेरिएशन बिशप डी एट रुक डी एट रुक एफ एट टेक हियर टेक हियर नाउ द क्वीन इज पिंड बट बिशप चेक नाउ यू हैव टू प्ले योर किंग टू लेट्स ए जी एट और एफ सेवन वेर एवर आई टेक एंड आई टेक एंड नाउ आई डोंट थिंक योर डेन कैन लूज दिस पोजिशन This is at least equal. He has a queen for a rook and a bishop. So rook takes d8 has been bishop d8 has been played. He's taken it. Now both sides have 50 minutes more, but already the moves are forced. You can't play anything else. Like if you play king at seven, can you guys find a classy move here for white to play and win? Come on, as you can do it. Tundo. A pin is met with a pin. insane game this game needs to be analyzed this is something i'll analyze pixel yogi i recently started playing love the game and the way you present it how do you know much more than these great players always pixel yogi it is already i have said it before i use an engine to do commentary i can see the best moves and i try to say it then the great players cannot see it and that is why they cannot play as well but my idea of doing commentary with the engine is not to showcase that i am the greatest chess player or something it is just so that i can you know try to anticipate moves and that's the only reason there are commentators who do it without the engines and sometimes i also try to do it but it is way different yeah you can't keep up this tempo uh let's see what is the answer that has been suggested by everyone here oh my god look at this look at the chat yeah they are so good rook d7 by everyone in the chat what an amazing move right what an amazing move just look at this rook d7 matlab if you pin me i pin you have you ever seen like this pin from here pin from here it's a classy it's a game of pins i'm going to use this as a game of pins It's lost. You play this, I take this. So anyway, he went rook f8. That that he had to do anyway. So once he went rook f8, then now he's taken on f8. By the way, Deba Jyoti Nandi has sent in a huge super chat of sixty four dollars. He says very happy with the content and progress of the channel. Love the video match analysis with commentary. all the very best for many more years of chess base india to come well deva jyoti you are very kind thank you so much for such a huge super chat of 64 dollars pushpajit cholkar has become a pillar of indian chess pushpajit thank you so much uh by the way what's up with pragnananda so Prag has just got into his position completely, and he's made his last move as well. We left it off somewhere here. He went f3, rook h8, king queen b2, rook h5, rook b7, queen d8, rook here. So Prag is like, oh Nils, you can come here. You can give me a check. I have king f2. I don't fear. Like for example, if you come here, ah, you have a threat here to check. but that's your only threat so how about i just play my knight back to f2 i control h1 so there's no mate and if you go here i go king f1 white is safe a knight is the best friend of a of a king in defense always remember that and here now this is big trouble on the seventh rank so you can't give it up king g8 and now king f2 rook h1 well there are many ways to win but a little bit of care has to be taken because nils is coming in with a check to the queen with his queen rohit b says sagar why are arjun's opponents blundering because arjun keeps up the pressure he forces them to make mistakes and also if you think about it challengers are of course some of them not very strong like right now arjun's opponent is around 24 50 and at that level you can make lot of errors not like 26 70 26 80 or 2700 they make they make lesser errors so rook h1 and now 
Prag has 50 minutes. So Prag is going to think here and he's going to maybe just go rook a1 and exchange one rook and say that I'm, I'm not going to take any risk. Or he may play king e2. It's possible. What about Magnus Carlsen's game? Very quickly going there and seeing what's happening. And as we discussed, that has happened here. Rook d8, rook f8, check, king takes, bishop here, take, take, and a3. So Magnus has readily gone into this position. But one thing is for certain, he cannot win this anymore. It is a two-way stream. Will Jordan be able to put pressure and try to win? But also that looks unlikely. You know why it's unlikely? Because this bishop and this pawn protect each other. So they are super safe. This is another weakness. So the king defends it. And the rook is going to attack the opponent's king. So all in all, it's going to all uh, kind of balance out. Duda game, please, says everyone. Okay. So... No, this is a draw. This is a draw for sure. I'm, I'm, I don't think this is going to go on for too long. Wow. Look at this. Crazy game. Crazy. Dumas Mehta. Kudos to your dedication and passion. The knowledge you impart to everyone and the great community you are creating will leave a long-lasting influence in Indian chess. Thank you, Dumas Mehta. That is the idea to to make a difference this is exactly why we started chess base india and i'm we are glad that we can make a difference but the the very important thing as you mentioned is to keep going and continue doing that so thank you very much for your support Ah, so everyone who was talking about with its game and who has just joined right now, I just want to show you the final position and maybe we can just think about it like what is happening. By the way, in this game of Mamediaro versus Duda, just to uh, make it sure, it seems like white is winning because the pawn is not queening and this rook is coming from this side to defend this pawn, like to stop the pawn. So it doesn't seem like Duda is going to uh, be able to save this, which means Mamed Yaro scores a win. By the way, I'm very interested to see what Mamed Yaro did in the opening. He didn't go g4, yeah, today. <laughs> look, at, look at Duda. Duda is like, oh, Mamed Yaro, g4. No, today it's like oh, g4. I am done with my small little experiment that I had to do. Now it's all simple chess. You know, it was it was a very interesting but this is supposed to be like a drawish line how did uh yeah i mean it's equal 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 i have we have seen this so many times in the champions chess tour we have seen the game of even magnus versus vidit in this line um i'm a bit surprised that aha uh -huh, e5 that actually mamediarov managed to in fact uh, black is better H4, yeah. Duda is doing really well. The five, but Mohamed Yarov is such a tricky player. Rook C2, King C2. Bishop C5. Ah, maybe something else he had to play. Bishop Rook at 7. But how do you find such moves and so many ideas? So he went here. F4, check here. Rook C5. Oh, this was a draw. This was kind of drawish, but H3 is wrong. Knight g2 had to be played so that you can block here with a check. Check, king here. Oh. The chess is too complicated. Okay. Magnus versus Van Forest. Van Forest has come to h5 with his king. Magnus has gone to h1 with his rook. Maybe he will come queen e2, trying to give this check. He'll go back to g1. Then he will move his rook back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then they will agree to a draw. So this would end in a draw. Uh, also, Pragnananda, very quickly, what is his decision after rook h1? He's thinking. Prag is thinking. 40 moves ke baad. He has got 50 minutes on the clock. So we'll come back when he makes his move. Going back to Vidit versus Asipenko game. What I felt, guys, is that overall like the game really heated up 
somewhere close to this mark you know when vidit went knight f5 he took queen takes and knight e7 this is where vidit i think made a choice he could have played queen f4 and gone in, and could have gone in that end game but when he played queen g4 esipenko took this pawn and this is where everything became very exciting because you can't take rook g3 so he played bishop f4 a check came in king h2 and now what i loved about esipenko was that he played king h7 very quickly and now what i loved about vidit in this was this move h4 i like this very very uh, nice move but actually if you look at it with an engine it will say it's a mistake it's a mistake because black has to find this very nice defensive move queen c8 which is very difficult to find truth be told so that's the reason why you can't play queen c uh, here h4 d4 he should have played queen c8 but d4 queen e6 and now with it made perhaps w what is your thought guys with it ne garam karke thanda chhod not sure not sure what happened with arjun and surya let's also have a look at arjun and surya's game i'm not sure if what what are your thoughts on this aha yes oh nice one by mayur he said yesterday dubo didn't find queen c8 with white and today asipenko didn't find queen c8 with black nice and no i mean i wouldn't say this is this is terrible or anything i think it was nice Gaurav, make a post video on what we can expect in CBI this year. Thanks for all the entertainment that you are imparting. Wishing for more such years, Gaurav. Yes, for sure. I mean, I don't need to make a video. In between this event, like in the next, I guess, a week, we are going to at least launch something which is very nice, and it is. It won't be like full fledged. It will be like a beta version which we will launch, and I hope that it will be very useful to you guys. So. that is something which is a very dream project that i wanted to do and in maybe a weeks time we will we will put it out um yeah let's look at what arjun did by the way uh, arjun erigesi won against rowen vyogal we were looking at this game somewhere till this point like we had seen it Rook f5, knight b4, takes, takes, knight e4, bishop f5, rook f5. He took on e5, queen c2. Mm -hmm. He's trying to do something here. But he went king g8, knight f2, bishop g7, knight g4, queen e4, queen f2, h5. Yeah, you resign here. That's the right move because. what this is hanging if you play bishop d4 at the very least i have at 6 so arjun actually got an easy win there what about surya ganguly surya drew with daniel darda which means that oh oh nice finish yeah nice finish in fact surya let's say in this position maybe around equal maybe equal and then Oh, Mahesh Kota Palli uh, says, "Hey Sagar, on vacation and rated fourteen fifty. I seem to have hit a plateau. Can you suggest good chess books to improve during this time?" Mahesh, maybe you can write on chessbaseindia at gmail dot com, um, and maybe I can try to suggest you something after looking at your games. Also, yes, uh, enjoy your time in India because I remember you always when you super chatted. It was in US dollars, and right now is in rupees, so you would be in India. um and we have another super chat from rahul anil bhagwat who has always 
been kind enough to support and he says many healthy and happy returns of the day thank you rahul so here surya ganguly uh seem to have got things rolling for him he's a pawn up but yeah his opponent got the pawn and king f5 king here 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 Ah, the finish was nice actually. Take here, here, rook f8, rook g2. Oh, 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 look at this smarty Daniel Dalla. See, normal normal people will play rook a3, rook a4, rook here, whatever, or they'll take this pawn. But Daniel Dalla does like rook g2. Surya, do you want to give me a check? And then you know he can even do like he can touch his king, bring it to f6, but not leave it. And then he can go here and take this. It's a stalemate. Smart. Oh, Magnus and Jordan drew. We, as we as expected, Magnus Carlsen and Jordan Van Forest have drawn their game. There was nothing much to play for, and they have drawn. But a brilliant game. Brilliant game. Uh, by the way, one um, yeah, just to show you guys how complicated this position was. Rook f five was a mistake because if you go rook here. And play h4. Then there is rook h3 attacking here. And this is a good position for you. But when you went rook f5, Jordan, then Magnus went h4, bishop f8, rook c2, bishop e7, rook b2. Ah, he had to go king f1 here. But he went rook b2. He took here. Now king f1. And he would be so unhappy. Magnus would be so unhappy because King E2 was winning for him. All he had to do was come out of this F1 square, come out and then he would win a piece. But even Queen G4, check. King here. Rook G7 was class. Classy move. And then this. So good game. Good game. Seriously good game and uh, well fought by Jordan. What is Pragnananda up to? Is he still thinking? Yes, Prag is still thinking. He's not taking any chances. Uh, you, want to, you want to see the standings? Okay, let me prepare the standings very quickly as to who is leading. Shaurya Mehta Anish drew in like 10 moves. So there was nothing much there. It, but it was fine for him because he was black. And he didn't have to really um, push. Kunal Arora says with every draw Magnus is losing rating. 2900 is difficult to achieve. That was for sure. Everyone knew that 2900 is not going to be easy. But Magnus... You know, he, he decided to take that risk because he thought it will inspire him to play good chess. But, you know, it can go the other way as well. Goblet Fire has sent a super chat of $36. Goblet Fire, one of the kind of first viewers yeah during the lockdown and uh, used to follow all the streams so thank you so much goblet fire time for prag is zero pratik because he has played 40 moves and now he's got 50 minutes more so the moment he makes his move the actual time will be adjusted but till that time he it will show zero
so actually standings wise yeah this is very important who is leading and who is not leading let me see if i can get it <laughs> mayur says magnus is 2900 raises other opponents to play better against him maybe maybe okay by the way guys great news coming in what is the news let me just tell you the news is that Vidit is still the leader of the tournament and is the sole leader of the tournament with three out of four Esipenko on two and half Magnus on two and half Mamediaro on two and half Richard Rapport on two and half Jordan Van Forest on two and half Duda on two Karuana on two and right now only one game is going on which is between Ramesh Babu Pragnan Pragnananda and Grandelius Nils and very likely that Prag will win and Prag will move to two points out of four which is again a very very respectable score in this tournament if you see on two points you have Duda and Karuana you will be ahead of Duda, Shanklin, Karyakin, Anish which is which is phenomenal yeah if you think about it so Prag uh, definitely but I mean there are still some things he has to take care of in this position he went rook a1 which is very logical i mean he has everything going for him why to indulge in a fist fight you know when you have things going your way you just say to yourself that i'm not going to get into all this dirty business i'm just going to play calmly and he just exchanges pieces one piece exchange here he can exchange rooks b6 e5 is weak too many weaknesses in the position so that is just not going to work out and also what is sb column sb is um uh, it's a tie break and if what? i'm not mistaken um if i'm not mistaken it is your book holes so when book holes is calculated it's just the score of your opponent but when you calculate sb it is the score of your opponent multiplied by the result against him so if you lost to someone then it is zero into his points which is zero if you beat someone it is one into that point so that is the difference i think between sb and Oh, I was talking about some chess position of Pragnananda, but here was no board. So, sorry about that. Uh, I'm also going to put up the standings of the of the challengers. And you will see that Arjun Erigesi is on three and a half. He's also the sole leader. So, imagine, here's this place in Tata Steel, in Vaikanze, in Netherlands. Somewhere, a small kind of village, town where the best players in the world have gathered and you have the world champion and then you have players from different countries and then two Indians are leading in two different sections Fidith Kucharati on three out of four and Arjun Erikesi on three and a half out of four how cool is that how cool is that what is TPR TPR is performance rating um, so yeah that's just what your performance so Arjun is performing at 2869 right now and Vidit is performing at 2927 uh... so guys I think I should call it a day or here you can say call it a night because Prague has just brought his rook back to a1 in this position he has played his rook here and he is better tomorrow is going to be a rest day tomorrow is 19th and then on 20th we will have action again if if i'm not mistaken 20th has some interesting pairings right um one second Let's quickly check playing schedule. VD versus AG, yeah? Yeah, tomorrow is the rest. Hmm. 
where do you see VD's ELO rating by the end of this tournament? I guess he should be close to around 27.40. He's right now 27.37. At least 27.40 would be a good realistic thing. Uh, if he gets close to 27.50, that would be amazing. But to get there, he needs to score a couple of more wins. And that is never easy. How many rounds remaining? There are nine more rounds. Yes, Abhishek Pokhriyal, Amruta's health is not the best. Uh, she is not very well. Uh, today she had some sort of food poisoning, so she's not doing so well. Uh, and um, she's taking rest and she will recover and she's looking forward to joining again very soon. Uh, Dubov Shankland tomorrow. Esipenko Karuana. Anish Vidit, not tomorrow, 20th. Anish with it and Prague versus Rapport. That's also fun. We have a super chat by Aditya Bhopale who says, Hello Sagar, congratulations on six years to Chessbase India. Always my go-to content on YouTube and been an integral part of my life since pandemic. Thank you. Well, Aditya Bhopale, thank you so much for following and thank you for supporting uh, the endeavor. No, no, Krish Chaitu, this is not the tournament for candidates. It's just a standalone event. It's a very prestigious event. If you win it, you get the bragging rights that you are the winner of Tata Steel. You get the prize money, whatever that is, but there's no qualification to candidates. Deveshi Shupadhyay says, tomorrow we have India versus South Africa, so no clashes. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for being here with me i just want to tell you that today chess base india completed six years before i leave uh, it has been a very very nice journey for us i have written an article on it uh, and it is pinned over here if you want to see I basically thanked everyone who is right now working for chess base india and given you an idea of how much work goes around to try and build something that we are trying to do. So all of these people, Amruta and me are not here, but apart from that, everyone else is here. And we have, we are really blessed to be working with these amazing people in our organization. Uh, and if you see here, I was just saying that in 2016, when we started off, Nadir Bek Abdul Satarov was running behind Magnus on the field of Qatar. Actually, it's 2015 December photo on the left. And by 2022, he is beating Magnus Carlsen at the chessboard. That's how things have changed. Also, another picture which has not been released anywhere is this one, which Amruta took of Pragnananda sitting in some tournament in Mumbai. It's the IFL. Uh, he was just on a random board, not even on the top board. And from there, he's now playing at Tata Steel Masters right now, winning his tournament. So, you know, uh, that's how things change in six years. And we have been, you know, on that journey together with these young talents, watching them closely, looking at their improvement. And this is also a very nice one where Amruta was sitting at home in 2016 and trying to figure out what should be the logo of Chess Base India, like making a king with a board there. If you see here, there is a chess board. And somehow we were not sure what to do. Should, there, should the flag be blurred? Should there be this? Should there be new design? And then finally we came up with this which kind of has, um, you know, it's just so much. It's a simple design. It is a king with a flag, uh, but it just shows our love for what we stand for. You know, it's chess and it's India and we stand for powering chess in India. So it was a very nice thought out thing. A lot of things have changed in the last six years, but one thing remains constant. We love chess. We want to power chess in India and we are making step-by-step uh, -step progress thanks to so many people who support us like Rushikesh Patil who's become backer of Indian chess all the money that we collect through memberships today we have had several members 
uh, I believe close to seven or eight members. All this money will go to a talented youngster. So thank you all once again for supporting. And Ishan Kulkarni says, isn't Chessbase a German company? Yes, it is. Chessbase is a German company, but Chessbase India is an Indian company incorporated in India. So we have the rights to sell Chessbase products at a discounted price in 10 countries in the Indian subcontinent but um, we do a lot of different things as well so take care guys and I will I will see you all um, day after tomorrow I'll also try and see if we can do something tomorrow but right now there are some health issues everywhere around and we'll try to figure that out you guys stay safe a great game today we witnessed between Vidit and Esipenko and to just for all the people who have joined in a very happy note to end on is oh by the way one thing which I forgot to tell and I should tell is that Help Chess India Foundation Help Chess which is the Chess Base India Foundation is now uh, ATG registered and in the comment section a lot of in the description many people were saying that you know uh, we want to pay by UPI we want to support so in case you want to support the description is in the description we have put the bank details and if you if you do contribute and you want ATG deduction because now we are ATG recognized which is an income tax section you can write to us and you will get that so you will get tax exemptions so uh, this will really help we also have now a CSR code which means that companies which want to do CSR activity which have which make quite tangible profits and have compulsorily to do CSR can contribute to Chess Base India Foundation which is Help Chess and this money will be counted in that so this will enable us to help more young players more rising talents of Indian chess and we will be able to make a bigger difference so you can just check out in the description and you can contribute if you would like to anyway the membership money goes to talents every month but in case if someone says that you know we don't want that cut of youtube that goes there 30 percent we want to make sure the full amount goes from here so you can contribute from there and as always if we ever use that fund we will write about it on our website everything is transparently used uh, there is no money that we keep from the foundation everything is used for a good cause so Thank you, guys. Take care. And bye-bye. Harsh Chopra, thank you for becoming backer of in, uh, Indian Chess. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.